Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Something a bit different for the Sunday chat. It would be less chat and more doing. Um, because of the two Orchid Society meetings, one after the other, I am three days behind watering on my pots and a day behind watering on my mounts. That has to be done today. So I've got a working day. So the plan <laughs> is to just leave the camera running and then later on today when I've finished the chores I'll edit some bits out or do whatever I need to do because you know there's going to be two maybe even three hours worth of video there so several things can happen there'll be bits where I'm chatting away that won't end up in the video and in addition to that the battery could run out and it just stops filming anyway there will be natural coffee breaks where I'll turn the camera off but first thing I thought I'd show you is I got that Friday night um, that's special for me that's only the second one I've ever got um, the, these are not dished out very easily 36 points and above, you're, you're looking at 90% of the 40 points. And, um, you know, uh, obviously if you've got 40 out of 40, that's perfection. And I don't think I've ever known that. <laughs> but to get 90% of the points is pretty good going. If I've got a pop-up of the plant, I'll put it up. But that, that was for my um, Cattleya cernua at the Christmas do. So it's a while back, but you have to wait for the following meeting. So that's that out of the way. Um, my Dracula Pusilla, the one with the tiny little bell-shaped blooms on, was of great interest to the chairman at Wessex, Lynn, good friend Lynn, and so we've done swapsies, um, and she's got her bit of the swaps, but I haven't got mine yet, um, but she did give me this, um, which is a Miltonia Spectabilis, um, it says hybrid on the label, but Spectabilis is a species, where's that come from? Uh, Wickman um, but nonetheless I mean it has got a new growth she said it hasn't been repotted I'll, I'll deal with that it's, um, it's got a bit of slug damage on one of the bulbs or what looks like slug damage but the new growth quite honestly looking at the plant is the future of the plant unless it can push out a new growth later and you know just as an example this has come from an orchid nursery you shouldn't be burying pseudo bulbs like that. I know it's in quite an open bark mix, but you know, your orchids should sort of sit on the media, not be buried in it. They're not that sort of plant. Anyway, I will deal with that, but at the moment I need that out of the way. Let's get myself organized here. This poor little plant, <laughs> it spends a lot of its life on the, la on the dining room table because of where it lives. And where it lives when I'm watering, it's in the flipping way. So let's get get that out of the way. Uh, I will probably walk past the camera and come back in on several occasions. The shadier cooler types are not for today but um, no there's nothing there but I've also got to do my mounts today and I've just remembered something as well. Let's get some water on the go make a start here. Um, just uh, luckily, coincidentally, all of the um, pots that I'm going to water and the mounts are on a flush. So I haven't got to have like two separate lots of water on the go. Now that's far more water than I would normally use in one go. <coughs> I'll explain that bit in a minute. But something that hasn't happened for some time is my Spanish moss hasn't had a dunk. So that's, what, that's why I've put a bit more water in there to get some depth. So we'll uh, get that on to soak and um, while that's soaking I can still use that water um, you know I can still do my watering so I need to get cracking oh, let's get that out of the way or I shall end up pouring water in my coffee um, move that out of the way for now or I will end up knocking it The vanders will need doing today, but I've got to warm the water up so they'll be last. Um, the fact that they're bare rooted doesn't matter. Now the idea today is to just pick the plant up. Do you need watering or not? And if there's anything to say about it, then I will. Yes, you do. That's easy decision. <laughs> this is a freshly repotted orchid, so obviously it's drying a lot quicker than perhaps some of the others would. When I water, I water. I don't muck about. No dribbles or trickles. In most cases, if I'm going to water something, 
I get on and water it. And then I don't water it again this time of year until it's virtually dry. Now this one is not going to get watered today because I've watered that separately. So you can just go out of the way for now. Next, <laughs> my only potted Phalaenopsis. Phalaenopsis are easy, you know, if the roots are white and a silvery colour, they're dry. So they need some water. That one's simple. This is um, Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory, this one. And um, yes, I'm getting some on the leaves, I don't worry so much about that. They'll dry off in here, especially at this time of day. And um, this one does have a spike coming, so uh, I'll have some blooms on that soon. Next. Biggie. Well, I know that will need some water. <laughs> yes, it does. Again, recently repotted, but um, repotted at what I'd call a good time. Um, most of the new growths are here, and they're pushing on. You know, they're, they're getting up towards maturity, but they've only just started their new roots. And the next lot of new growths will move forward across the pot. That's why it was pushed right over that side. Um, so I've got one here, one here, one there, and one there. Four new growths to move into that space and lots of new roots. And in this case, in desperate need of water, as I said, this Orchiata bark, when it's new, it dries pretty quick. And I can't really, because the plants are all over the place, Unless I positioned them in such a place in the grow room that they were together, the recently repotted ones, I can't go around moving loads of plants to just get at a couple. So they have to put up with being dry for a bit. And that one's a bit big to go on the table. Chuck that one down there for a minute. Uh, what's my poor old Psychopsis doing? How dry are you? Oh God. Too dry. <laughs> I'm not supposed to dry out really. But in these cooler temperatures, the poor old Cyclopsis is suffering anyway. It's not happy. Um, not happy at all. And this has got to be repotted soon. Um, the branch on the spike is still green. That's not failed. And new growth is still growing. So, yeah. Still with us. Skin of the teeth job though. Say the, the, the decision making process of to whether water to water or not at this time of year, you know, if this, if this was the growing season, there would be no decision. They would get watered even if they were still moist because um, they're going to use it in the growing season. No sign of new growths on that yet, but uh, doing okay. Got some little ones up the back here. Again, recently repotted. This is Peter Comp. Still not started any new roots yet, so this this one's. Um, I have to hold this one carefully. It's wobbly in the pot. I should have staked it. So I just. You know, it doesn't get handled very often, but um, it is still a little bit wobbly. But new roots should be coming soon. The, the, the new growth is pushing on, but <coughs> excuse me. But it's one of those who, that doesn't produce the new roots with the new growth, it produces them later, soon. Uh, another biggie. Yeah, you're dry. That's Shelob Tolkien, that one. Not to them. It's not quite as dry as the others um, that have been recently repotted, but nonetheless, I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but you can see as the water goes down, the colour of the media changes. So it was dry, and um, this one's got quite a few new growths pushing on in various places, so that will be in bloom down the line. One, two, three, four, I think. Four new growths on that one. Another biggie on the floor. And the last little one up here, this is the Miltonia Sunset that's um, that had a bad case of Fusarium when it got repotted, so it got split up into pieces. Um, there's three pieces in here, and um, there should be some. Yeah, I was just going to say this should be starting new roots now, and it is. So, providing the treatment worked, this is probably safe now. Um, let's just see. I 
should have shown you before I got the dribbles going, shouldn't I? But um, where's my camera? Quite a good set of new roots coming around this new growth and this new growth pushing new roots as well. The other one is starting new roots, but it's a little bit behind. So there's three pieces in there, three new growths, all starting some roots. Because the old roots weren't too clever. Right, let's get this out of the way and get the next lot in. Drip that all over the place. As I say, I wouldn't normally have so much water in the bowl. Usually end up watering sort of five or six plants, at which point I'm virtually out of water, and then I pull that away and start some fresh. You shouldn't share water really, um, but I can't really sensibly produce enough RO water to actually um, not share water, so I do. But I minimise it, you know, by just sharing it with a few plants and then start again. Now this monster is Dendrobium chrysotoxin. Big debate on this when I got it because it looks far too big to be chrysotoxin. But an analysis of the uh, growth pattern, this was probably heading towards the light. If you look at the latest three growths, which are these here and this one, that's more like the size it normally grows to. Um, but yeah, this, this uh, was in bloom when I got it, which I think would have been about May or June time. Now this is a drier in winter dendrobium. Hasn't long been potted and it's in pure bark. So I know I can pour a fair bit of water on there and it'll run straight through and out the bottom. So all I'm doing there is keeping that ticking over. That didn't get watered last time round. That hasn't had any water for at least three weeks. It's in a sort of Semi-rest, I'll call it. It's not a true rester, but it is drier in winter. So, that's that one. And my Cymbidium, we never get to look at this because it lives on the floor. Um, spike's coming on nicely. And um, what I do with this is, I'll do it now while it's uh, in my hand. I'm not going to water it. Um, not today. This holds a lot of water. Is I just move the clip up slightly every now and again being very careful not to knock a bud off, just to keep it upright. I want that upright, not for appearance, but for space. <laughs> so that's that one done. You're not getting done today. Right, this thing, chuck some water on that. <laughs> this is the thing I got at the raffle. It is actually growing now. Got a cane coming up here, cane coming up here, the top's extending, and this little distorted piece that I threw in is actually starting to push on now. But that's an uh, Epidendrum uh, radicans type. No idea, of course. No, not the usual. Typical raffle prize. I don't want it. Let's make sure somebody else takes it away. Because the rules with our raffle are that if, you, if your ticket is called, you have to take a prize. None of this, I'll put it back, or I've already had one. If you ticket, your ticket gets caught, you have to take it. You have to take something off the table. And of course, when it gets towards the end of the table, the stuff that's left, nobody wants. So, uh, <laughs> this is a little, uh, I've forgotten them, the label's faded as well. Um, something Naevian. Uh, Odontoglossum. Now, FEM. Now, this, is, this pushes out new growth in all sorts of weird and wonderful places, which it's currently doing. We've got one, two, three, four, five new growths on that, but most of them are coming up in the middle of the plant. Oh, there's another little one around the edge there. Um, and uh, they're nowhere near mature yet, so this, is, this has got a fair old weight for this to bloom. This lives on the floor, it's a cool grower. And get it down away from any form of heat and any intense bright light. So that's where that one lives. And tucked up behind it, oh, if I get at it, is my Syllogeny Cristata. Again, it's on the floor to keep it cool. And I always pick this up this time of year in great anticipation, looking for some signs of some flipping spikes. And I've got one. Yippee.
So um, it's highly unlikely to be a new growth this time of year. Anything else showing yet? No, well, I doubt if you'll be able to see it. It's um, minute at the moment. But on this extension here, just there, next to my finger, is what is probably going to be a spike. And this one is slightly dry. It's going to have a trickle, and I mean a trickle, because this shouldn't get much water in winter. The bulbs are not shriveling. Actually, no, you're not going to get any. Um, if the bulbs are still plump, it's living quite happily on its reserves. On the grounds, it's not growing. But once spike or spikes start to move, it'll start needing a little bit of help. But for now, no. So you can just go back there. That lives close to the glass, but on the floor where it's cool. As opposed to this one that lives on the floor where it's cool, but not close to the glass, because it's not a high light plant. Right. <sighs> what are you doing? Still no sign of life at the base. This is my sad Harvey Annum. It's growing kikis, and I do have a couple of kikis in a pot that are growing on, but there's no sign of life at the base, either in roots or shoots. There's just a kiki pushing up there. So, let's give it a dunk. That's all it gets. It doesn't stand in water, it just gets a little bit of hydration. That's that. I doubt if the mother plant on that is ever going to grow. <clears throat> what have we got here? An Alisara. Are you dry? This algae is a bit of a nuisance because it can fool you into thinking the plant the plant's wet. But there is a way. If you look at the green, some of it's dark green. Well, where it's dark green, it is still wet. And um, this has got two new growths that haven't really got their root system going yet. It's going to get missed. Miss that one. What else we got in here? Um, we got the uh, Findlayanum kikis that are going flipping silly in here. Um, and all I'm going to do with that is um, change the water. Because <laughs> they're actually standing in water at the moment, so uh, we'll just refresh the water. Give me something a bit fresh and a bit deeper because it was evaporating. These kikis have all stopped growing. Um, but at some point down the line, they'll start the new growth from the base. Um, you know, that's what I'm waiting for, really. Um, but nonetheless, it's still growing. Right, top shelf. Very slightly damp. But quite a lot of aerial roots. That's just how it ended up when it was repotted. And a couple of mealy bugs, these little tykes. When there's just a few mealybugs like that on a leaf, all I do is squash them with my finger and take them off. And in this case, wipe them on my jeans so they don't get in the water. I told you I was a scruffy person. <laughs> These jeans need a wash, so if I get them dirty, they really don't matter. Lovely little yellow twinkle, that one. Love that kind. The Latorias, still in bloom, but dropping its blooms quite dramatically now. This is another one, heavy on the algae, but um, bone dry at the moment. And um, this time of year, I would prefer them to dry out in between watering. These are continuous growers, yes, but um, we had a talk at the Orchid Society on Friday from a guy who spent a lot of time studying the orchids of Thailand. He goes out there a lot and um, not only just goes looking around for orchids but you know does proper studies while he's out there. And a um, little bit of slightly newer information apart from the fact that we both agreed we would rewrite the books and get rid of this don't water your orchids between whatever it is um, Halloween and Valentine's Day, because he disagrees with that totally. He's been there. And he said there's effectively three seasons where a lot of the dendrobiums come from. 
There is a wet season, which is summer into autumn. Then there is winter, which is a lot drier and an amount cooler. Not cold, but cooler. And that depends on elevation. And um, the one thing he did say is that during that period, they only get about two inches of rain instead of two meters of rain. Well, two inches of rain is not no rain, is it? It's two inches of rain. It's more than some countries get in a year. So it's not a dry winter. It's a drier winter. And with mist and fog and morning dew, there is no way those plants are dry for two and a half, three months. And he totally agrees and disagrees with the books. Yay. <laughs> trying to get that across for ages. Um, but he's been there and done it and got the t-shirt. They're the people to talk to. The roots coming on that. Good. Pushing on. Another recent repot. Yes, so he said there's three seasons, that you go in from the wet monsoon season, summer into autumn, where it's hot, steamy and very wet. You head on into winter, where it cools down a bit and the rain slows right up. And he said, and then there's another little season that a lot of people forget about. And it's the early summer, which is still drier, but starting to warm up. And as it warms up, it creates the rainy season. So you get the cooler, dry, drier winter, followed by a warmer, drier spell. Yeah? And that's often the period when they bloom. Because as it warms up, the pollinators get about. So there we go. But effectively, if you're looking at um, moisture content, you've got the wet season and two dry seasons, one of which is a bit warmer than the other one. That's the difference, but the amount of rainfall stays about the same. Deezers. Pretty damn dry. Ooh! Must not be dry. It's the only orchids I've got that really are bog plants. Never water those from the top. I've even got grit on the top of the media to keep the base of the plants dry. Or not get water on them. They never get water on them. A lot of dead leaves need getting off, but I'm waiting for the growth to start to push on those. Again, water from the bottom. These are starting to grow. They're starting to show signs of growth. It's a pity they're all the same, but um, in the not too distant future, um, we've got our 60th anniversary show coming up at the end of March, two day event, and I'm hoping that the failed arrangements last year will reinstate themselves at that show, because um, two people, I think it is, from the Devon Orchid Society said that they would get me some deezers, but it's a matter of getting them to me. And somebody did actually turn up at our show last year. Whether they had deezers or not, I don't know, because I missed them. They left before I sort of got in there. I was told the guy was there, but, you know, Hannah and I were having our lunch and a drink because uh, we hadn't had anything that day at all, no breakfast or anything because of all the travelling and stuff. So uh, I missed the guy. But I will resend emails and say that, you know, I will be at the show. If you can get me some deezers, they will be gratefully received. Right, so that's the oddities done. Well, that's got two new growths on. That's a little Sologeny. Um, was was Orcratia once. It's uh, knitted her now. And the guy who did the talk on the um, orchids of Thailand had some lovely shots of these growing wild in bloom as well. He said, quite honestly, when you're on an orchid tour out into the jungles and up the mountainsides and stuff like that, <laughs> unless you really have got a good eye, if orchids aren't in bloom, you'll just walk straight past them because the undergrowth is so sort of dense and there's so many plants growing on the trees that it's very easy to just walk straight past them. How are you doing? 
the new growth on this little uh, one is um, in moss because it didn't have any roots and that's all that's getting watered I'm just trickling it down that side of the pot the rest of the pot will stay dry I just want the base of that new growth and a little bit of moisture um, so you see the back half of the pot didn't get watered at all and that didn't get watered in the last run it got missed out still wet it's just not using the moisture what about you You can wait, still wet. And this one, I know that's, yeah, I know that's still wet. That got missed last time and it's still wet. This new growth didn't produce roots, which is an oddity, but it now has another new growth just starting. It's, um, it's one of my old Odonto Blossom types, Golden Rialto. I'm struggling, really struggling. Oh well, what you can do is uh, hope, but the fact that I can see yet another new growth on that, uh, there's a little bit more hope than last time I looked at it basically. But these are the cooler growers, for a start, that's why they're on the bottom shelf. And this time of year they do go in quite bright light, because the what you're thinking is bright light in the winter isn't it's your brain adjusting your eyes and actually saying it's a nice you know it's a nice bright day today when really compared with the summer it's not a bright day at all so they can go in quite bright light for now next shelf <laughs> love it when you pick up orchids and there's dead flowers all jammed in the leaves this is my only antelope type Drobium black antelope. And this is not doing as well as it should be. Suffered really badly in the heat. These were the latest growths on that. It dumped all their leaves. Um, luckily, the leaves on the other two new growths, that's, this is last year's growths, managed to hang in there. And they, they are still growing. They're still pushing out a lead. And it did start another little one, but that's a winter growth, so I'm not sure how well that's going to do. And although all the new roots are at the top, the pot's wet, it's not using the moisture, so it's not going to get any more. Let that dry off a bit. Ooh what have we got here? Biggie. Oh, this is catatanti. Good job to stop these growing. Um, big, strong new growth, that should bloom. Um, th this was repotted not too long ago. Excuse me. Fresh bank wallet, and this has re-established its root system after the repot, so this is going to push on like mad this year. Looking forward to the blooms on that. Let's hope I can get a good quality spike. Um, last last time it bloomed, which probably was last year, I think, it wasn't a quality spike for that plant. You know, if I'd been a judge, I'd have said, no, 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 that plant can do a lot better than that, and I'm aware of that. Didn't have as many branches on the spike, and it certainly didn't have anywhere near as many blooms as it should have done. But at least it bloomed. <laughs> this is a funny one, this one is. It's a Miltonia, and um, I had to pot it like this, or I'd have buried the pseudo bulbs. But this particular new growth is slightly higher than I was expecting it to be. But look at the roots. Now, I'm not worried about those going aerial. They're close enough to the media that the tips will get down in there. Otherwise, I'd have had to deal with that. But, yeah, root growth. <laughs> That's what it should be like. This is one of the recent Catlias from Beatrix. Yet to be repotted yet to see any signs of new growths or new roots. So bifoliate, and my experience and chatting to others said that out of the Catlia Alliance, the bifoliates are the most sensitive to root disturbance. So I need to get this one right. So I'm waiting for it to grow some new roots. Irrespective of what the new growths or not are doing, I'm waiting for new roots. When I see new roots, you can come out of the pot. But the media it's in doesn't look bad. It looks like reasonable quality bark, so I'm not in any form of panic about that one yet. 
I do say yet. <laughs> Shari babies recently repotted, new growth, two new growths on there, good, pushing on, new roots already starting, so no worries with that. I see new roots and there's a hint of dryness in the pot, I will water it. So there's quite a lot of the plants are effectively not growing and if they're not growing and there's a hint of moisture in the pot, they're not getting any more. It needs to go before it gets topped up. And you are another Miltonia, Summer Breeze. Again, mass of new roots under that new growth. And I see that. That one's still slightly damp at the bottom, but the new roots at the top are numerous, so it can take a little bit. But it's not getting a soaking, it's just getting a top up. shells because of the different heights of the plants I have to get virtually all the plants off. This is my Oncidium sweet sugar which we don't see. Serious state of rescue this poor little thing but its latest growth has produced some new roots but its future will be in its next new growth um, and if this growth decides to bloom I'll take the spike off. Need the plant to get going. It's had hard times this poor little thing. This goes back to the days when um, things got left in their pots too flipping long. And it's not so much that they were in there too long. What I hadn't realised is the bark that I bought was rubbish. And I, I didn't know that. You know, so I'm merrily thinking, well, that's only been in his pot, you know, less than two years. But the bark had already gone in that short time. What are you up to? This is Meltasia Brienne. Not a happy bunny, are you? But you are a bit dry. Again, that pot's too big for that plant. Um, but it's remedied by the fact that the only root activity is just in this little area. So that's the only area that's going to get some water. Just down the side. You can leave the rest of the pot dry. There's nothing going on in it. You'll just get some water down the edge. There's no point in watering a pot with an area of a pot that's got no roots in it. Not at the moment, anyway. Right, last little few and then we get up onto the top shelf. Where the biggies are. These are my, um, this is Hercoglossum, Dendrobium Hercoglossum Kikis. Um, and I can see that pot's still wet. There's not much activity going on. Um, there's a couple of nubbins on, <laughs> on that Kiki. That might be more kikis, it might be being silly and deciding to bloom. Yeah. And another pot full in here as well. These will both be to go later down the line. Yeah, you're still wet at the bottom as well. This one's got some growths coming as well. Again, not sure whether they're going to be kikis or uh, growths. What are you doing? This is a Rossio Glossum. Rawdon Jester. That's the size the bulb should be, not that size. That's the size the leaves should be, not that size. Very unhappy plant. Difficult to say why. Close relative of the Odontoglossums, probably once were, and maybe one of the parents of this cross still is. So it's a cooler grower, but it has the most thick scrappy roots on it. These are like Phalaenopsis roots, which is unusual for an Oncidium type. And it's got some, but it's not going to do anything with that latest growth. So let's see what it does this coming growing season. It's certainly not doing much at the moment, that's for sure. Another little one here. What have I here there? Oh, this is my little wildcat cheetah. Struggling, but at least it's got a new growth and got some active roots down there and that area with the active roots is dry. So again, watering half a pot. There's no roots around the back of that plant. There's no point in getting that bit wet. So just a trickle. 
I'm running out of space here. Solaria, Sophronite, still pushing up blooms here and there. This one's ever so difficult to tell. The problem with this one is the roots don't go right down to the bottom even though it's a shallow pot. So even though it may still be quite damp down here, that's not where the roots are. So I have to sacrifice getting that a bit soggy at the bottom to hydrate where the roots are. Um, that is a little dry. You can have a little bit. Not much. There's moss in this pot, so the water will spread. You know, it'll, the, the moss will draw it into the spaces that didn't actually get much water there. And you can see there wasn't too much came out the bottom of the pot. The reason being that the moss in the top of the pot grabbed hold of it on the way past. So the bottom of the pot hasn't got much wetter than it already was. Believe that, believe anything. Last one on this shelf, what are you up to? <laughs> what you're up to is a totally faded flipping label. This is what I'm getting at. That's supposed to be a Sharpie permanent marker, one of the best on the market. So cheap, cheap Chinese copy, I reckon. Um, this is a Hamilton Ara. And it's not, this, is, this was its latest growth that just didn't, it stopped growing. It looked like it was really gonna push on and then it stopped. Um, but it does have another one. I'm not quite sure what that's up to, but it is dry. I'm not quite sure what you're doing. I'll give you a, a helping hand. I did think that um, I do have a little bit of a problem this time of year, because um, I do still feed the plants at a, at a low level, um, and if a plant misses a run because it's still wet and that was its feed run and the next time it gets flushed it won't have had any food for consecutive waterings so it'll be missing out a bit. Luckily this time of year that's not really a big deal. Uh, there's not much going on. But that's going to change soon. Right so we're on to the top shelf now and I need a coffee so I will take a break. Right, so that's the coffee done, and um, I've offloaded the clips off the camera onto the computer. So there's only so much space on there. And look at the time, the unload time. I'd say there's about 45 minutes of video so far. So obviously, um, and I haven't finished yet. So um, we are getting towards the point where uh, we've already got to two videos. And three would probably too, be too much of the same thing. So um, I'll do a split at some point. One for today and one for later in the week. And turn it into two. And um, if I apply some editing, um, we may well have two nice videos there. Um, but a lot of people actually said they quite like seeing me in the videos. Um, when I'm standing in front of the camera talking, I won't say I'm self-conscious, but I'm aware that I'm on film. Um, it does make a difference to me. However, while I'm doing this, I'm not looking at the camera, so I'm taking no notice of you lot, and the words that are coming out are nothing more than me thinking out loud. Come on! This is my uh, repotted brassier, which... Um, Need some roots under that new growth. Well, it's not going to get on if the moss keeps drying out, but unfortunately it's a recent repot, so it is drying a bit quicker than I like. But the moss is holding the moisture for enough time. There is a theory, they say, make your roots hunt for moisture. Um, but I'm not sure that applies to some orchids. What are you doing? God, there's a lot of algae in there. Let's do a repot. Two nice new growths coming in two separate places, so it's continuing both leads. It aborted that back in the heat wave and dumped a load of its leaves, so that's not looking good at all. That's Roy Tokenaga White Knight, a Latoria type. But its hope is a new set of roots under those two new growths, at which point it'll get repotted and we can get rid of the flipping algae. 
Some of it is moss. There is moss on the top of the pot. Um, this, that's just had a trickle basically because I'm not quite sure how wet that is. Um, that is moss, definitely. Where are we, camera? That's moss, but that's algae. There is a difference. And moss on the top of the pot, I'm quite happy with. I really don't mind that at all. No drip tray for you, so I need you to dry. Oh, this Latoria is looking nice at the moment. The leaf that went on the floor was not off this plant. <laughs> it's fallen off something else above it. Um, it does look like this growth here is going to bloom. Um, That's the latest growth, the tallest one, so obviously progress on this plant is, is good. Um, cane's getting bigger all the time from probably a, a seedling here. Moving on, gradually getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> no idea how big it's ever going to get because it, it isn't there yet. That's still a young plant. But Latorias can bloom on young plants. That's one of their bonuses, really. Um, what is that? Oh, I look like a bug, it's just a piece off of something else. So again, this has got moss on the top, I'm happy with that. Um, again, you can just have a trickle. Not much. This will, this will be getting a repot. Most of my Latorias were acquired around the same time. So they come up for their repotting around the same time. But I wouldn't repot a Latoria this time of year unless I had to. It's not in its growth mode. It's in its um, I'm not doing much mode. <laughs> right, what else have we got? God, that's, that's absolutely crispy dry. You can hear it. Yeah, crunchy dry. But this time of year, for a Neo, that is no big deal at all. Give it another month or so, and that will be a big deal. And I'll have to move this to a place where I don't have to move lots of plants to get at it because it's going to need more need watering a lot a bit more often. And um, come the summer months, when I get the heat out here, the chances are this will get treated like the mount and get watered every day. Unless the moss is still soaking wet, obviously. But um, yeah, coming on. Some signs of new fans coming. Uh, some movement, slow this time of year, fair enough. What on earth is that? Um, Dendrobium macrophyllum variety, Turnitensi. Oh, I moved this one. Um, this little plant was up here under the light. And the lights caught it. Yeah? Now that may just be an old leaf, but that's light burn. And so's that. Both sensitive new growths. So I moved it away from the light. And it's funny the difference in the light. If you look at the height there, those two leaves are at the same height. They caught the light. This one didn't. And that's only an inch difference. And that's probably caught the light as well. So that got moved. And that's um, another, another trickle water. Again, it's, um, this one is actually putting up growths. So uh, I don't want to get that to stay dry for any length of time. It is actively growing. So, as a Latoria type, subtly different to the others, because this one's really growing. And most of the others are not pushing up growths or roots at the moment. Um, what are you up to? Oh my God, that's far too dry. This should be outside, really. This shouldn't be in here. It's too warm for it. It's supposed to chill right down in the winter. The other thing it's supposed to do is never dry out. <laughs> As it's um, a relatively young plant, I'm taking a risk with it by not putting it outside this year. Um, but luckily it's still dying back in places, which is what it's supposed to do. And the chances are when I see the new growths, I'm going to take the old growths off as though it died back um, and force it to grow again, if you see what I mean. little carnivorous plant. My only one, don't panic, there won't be shelves full of them. I won't change my videos from orchids to carnivorous plants. Not until hell freezes over. Struggle with this one a lot as well. This is, um, oh, I can get it to bloom, stunning. It's an infundibulum cross. 
it's called Formidable, it's crossed with um, Formosan. Um, gorgeous blooms on that. Pristine white, large, bright goldy yellow coloured lip. And it's reached its terminal leaf. And even the leaves on the latest growths don't look happy. It's just not a happy plant that way. But we will keep going with it because of the blooms. <coughs> I'm not even going to talk about you because you won't bloom. Nuisance. Hello, a new growth coming on. <laughs> we shall see. If you don't bloom on that growth, you're probably not going to be around much longer. Ooh. Now that growth's not reached full size yet. And there's a couple of scale on those leaves. Where are they coming from then? They must be coming from down near the bottom somewhere. I'm going to have to get at that one. There's only a couple, it's not an outbreak. But this growth isn't mature yet. The leaves haven't fully opened and it's already got a sheath. Come on! I suppose I better say what it is. It's an Encyclia prismatocarpa, dearly known as a non bloomer. A nuisance. I've been working with that one for flipping ages trying to get it to bloom. And these we don't see very often. And really, I ought to be filming these as separate entities. These is uh, Nobilies, and I need these for my Dendrobium talk. Uh, this is Prima Donna. Um, a number of buds coming out in a number of places, mostly on older canes, filling in the gaps where it missed out last time. And the new canes didn't develop to their full height because it got disturbed <coughs> and split and repotted. But nonetheless, it's producing buds and there's at least one new growth from the base. If it's producing buds and a new growth, it needs something to work with. So despite the time of year, it's just had a good watering. <laughs> I don't treat nobilies like a lot of other people. I'm a rebel. How are you doing? Oh, you're getting some colour showing on the buds. This is the nice bright orange um, epidendrum. Radicans type. Comet Valley. Uh, Orange star, I always forget the last bit. Uh, recently repotted and very dry, which it should not be. And being the end of uh, January now, all of these plants that have been recently repotted that are in new bark, um, next time I water, I'm not doing it now, they will be repositioned in such a place where I can keep my eye on the pots. These are getting to the point now where they shouldn't be going dry for the number of days. And the fact that I'm late watering as well, poor things are quite dry. Older leaves dying back on the little old canes. Those were the canes prior to the ones that bloomed last year. But that's going to be a mass of blooms down the line a bit. And um, probably we'll put a stake in the middle of that and put a strap round it just to pull them all in. See how much nicer they would look in bloom like that, than like that, yeah? So I'll probably get at that one next time I water it. I know. <sighs> what are you? Alessiara, Sunday Best Pink Skirt Awarded Plant. <laughs> this was one of those must be saved at all costs. Well, it looks like we've managed to save it. Nice strong new growth, nice healthy green leaves, and new roots pushing out, and more just starting. So, you are no longer a rescue, you are a come on, get on and grow, which it is doing. Doing very well, in fact. Good on you. That's that one. And, um, I'm just out of water here. So, this is what I normally do is um, I put some water in use it up and then top it up. So although I'm sharing water, I used to like fill this right up and water the whole place with one batch of water. That increases the risk of spreading things, yeah? So the smaller amount of water I use each time, that's my way of sharing water. I 
can't not share water, but I don't recommend it in any shape or form. If you can avoid it, then do so. Uh, now last time I looked at you, you had flipping scale and mealy bugs. Um, I may have managed to hit them hard enough that they've either <laughs> they've either given up or are hiding and hiding very well. This is a nobly type, allegedly, called Wedding Flowers. It has lovely yellow blooms on. Um, but as a plant, last year, it bloomed very, very well, and it seemed to exhaust itself. Uh, it might have been me not feeding it well enough. But um, it did put up a couple of new growths, <coughs> excuse me, which should bloom this year. Right, that's that lot. And me putting these back on the shelves is not good video material, so I'll stop. Um, no point in filming that bit. Just wasting my battery. Okay, I'm going to cut that one off there. Um, it needs to be split into two videos and heavily edited. Um, there's going to be bits in there that I don't want to leave in, like you know, putting the stuff back on the shelves and things like that. So I'll end up with two videos. So I'll cut this one off here. That will be uh, today's Sunday and then the rest of the clips will go into part two which I'll post later in the week um, even though they were filmed today on Sunday. Hope you've enjoyed that sort of thing, um, you know, me chatting away as I'm working. Normally I wouldn't be doing that out loud, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not ready to be locked up, men in white coats, you know, taking me off. Um, that was thinking out loud, that's all it was. So, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for dropping by.